Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today I have two all new 2024 Chevy tracks behind me. And today I wanna to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the 1RS trim as well as the LT trim. And I think this is a good comparison for a few reasons. So the first reason I think this is a good side-by-side -side comparison is because these two trims aren't going to be too far off of starting MSRP. So both of them are gonna start in the mid $23,000 price range, depending on how you equip them. Uh, but anyways, about 500 to $1,000 apart of starting MSRP. So I think a lot of people out there will cross shop these two. And the second reason I think this is a good comparison is because the One RS uh, offers a lot of the same equipment if you get some of the optional packages of that of the LT. Although the LT does have a few exclusive features Features and is the first trim level in the lineup to get a few things such as the 8 inch digital dashboard, the 11 inch infotainment radio screen, uh, keyless start, proximity entry, stuff like that, uh, depending on how you equip the LT. So I think this is a good comparison for those out there that might be interested in the all new Chevy tracks and looking to stay under that $25,000 price point. So before we get into doing the side-by-side -side comparison, I do want to go over the exact equipment that each one has. So on my left, I do have a 1RS in the nitro yellow exterior, uh, jet black, gray, red accented cloth interior. This one does have the driver confidence package, which includes the blind zone alert, as well as the lane change alert and rear cross traffic alert. And that is it on this particular one, which brings the MSRP to just under $24,000, including destination. And on my right, I do have the LT trim level of the tracks finished in the Harvest Bronze exterior with the jet black yellow accented interior. Now this one does have two optional packages, including the driver confidence package, which includes the blind zone alert, the rear cross traffic that the One RS does, but it also does add adaptive cruise control to the feature set. So if you do want adaptive cruise control, you do have to get the LT trim or higher um, in this new tracks lineup as that is not available on the lesser trims below that. And then lastly, this LT also has the LT convenience package, which includes a lot of nice amenities, some of which are actually standard on the One RS, such as the heated steering wheel and heated front seats. But it also does add the keyless open and keyless push button start, among a few other items as well. So those are the main two packages on this particular LT, which brings the MSRP to $24,680, including destination. So starting at the front, you're going to notice immediately that there is a difference in the accent trim used throughout the front grille and the lower front fascia. So on the 1RS as well as the 2RS, you're going to find a lot of darkened chrome accents, black bow ties, the red RS badging, as well as some of the other gloss black accents throughout the trim. It does look very sporty in appearance and definitely goes with the RS or the Rally Sport vibe that Chevrolet tries to do in many of their vehicles. This one still does have the LED projector headlights standard across every tracks, but you don't get LED daytime running lights. You instead get the incandescent turn signals in that upper portion right there. And I believe the daytime running lights are actually a low powered version of the main headlight beam themselves. Uh, so that is the main difference there on the One RS. You see all of the gloss black accents across the lower bumper. And like I said, the black bow tie really does set it off and give it a little bit different vibe. Now moving over here to the LT, you're gonna find a lot more chrome or brightened trim throughout the front end and the grill area of this vehicle. You still get the LED projector headlights, but you do gain the LED daytime running light in this upper portion found on the LT and higher. And your incandescent turn signal moves down below the headlight assembly, um, as you can see in that lower portion right there. So a much smaller turn signal uh, housing, if you will. It still uses the incandescent bulb, but you do have the brightened chrome trim that kind of boomerangs or splits off into the uh, painted section of the bumper, the gold bow tie found in the center of the grill with the matte black plastics, and then more of the silver accented trim on the lower front bumper itself. So as a whole, that's going to be the main difference at the front end of each of these two trim levels. Now moving along the side of the vehicle, there's going to be another key difference in the wheel designs and the wheels diameter as well. So over here on the One RS, you do get 18 inch wheels as standard. These are a machine gloss black accented finish wrapped in 225, 55, 18 inch Goodyear Assurance all season tires. And over here on the left on the LT, you do get 17 inch wheels as standard. These are again a split five spoke design with a machined and I would say dark gray metallic finish. These are wrapped in 225, 60, 17 inch Continental Pro Contact TX all season tires. So different brands, different diameters, and an overall different wheel design. You have to let me know down in the comment section below which one you think looks better, but I do really like the 18 inch here on the One RS. Now moving over here to the mirror caps, these are gonna be body color on the LT, no turn signal integration. They are going to be heated and do have blind spot detection because of the optional equipment on this particular tracks. It does have proximity entry on both front door handles that is actually not available on the One RS at all. 
And backing up to the side here, you can see most of the same matte black plastic trim on the lower cladding. Uh, body color door handles, you do have the black roof rails up top um, and the tinted windows for the rear passengers. But as a whole, not too much difference in terms of the appearance on the side of the vehicle. And moving over here to the One RS, you do get gloss black mirror caps to give it more of a sporty vibe. Still no turn signal integration. They are going to be standard heated mirrors and do have the optional blind spot detection on this particular tracks. Body color door handles, but again, it does not have proximity entry available on this trim level. So if you do want that, you'll have to stick to the LT. And you can see the One RS also does not get the roof rails at the top of the vehicle. So that gives it a totally different aesthetic in my opinion. Um, I just noticed that now actually, uh, is that this one is kind of all body color flattened up top where you look at the LT trims and some of the higher trims. It does give it a little bit additional height, a few inches in terms of the roof rails, uh, but definitely gives it a totally different aesthetic you have to let me know down in the comment section below which one you think looks better. I actually don't mind the roof rails. I think that would be the one that I like oh, just a little bit better. Now coming out back, you cannot get any LED lighting for the rear tail lights, turn signals, or anything like that on any new track. So it's all going to be the same lighting setup of incandescent bulbs, turn signals, brake lights, and reverse lights. There is this gloss black portion that goes into the rear bumper. Once again, this matches the front of the LT in specific, more of the silver bright trim on the lower diffuser portion, the red reflectors, your LT badge on the tailgate, gold bow tie, and your backup camera, of course, which is standard on every new vehicle and has been for several years. So that is going to be the back end of the LT. Now moving over here to the One RS, it's gonna match the front once again. So the same lighting throughout, uh, incandescent bulbs, the gloss black portion here on the rear bumper. This one does have the black tracks logo here on the tailgate itself and there is the gloss black rear diffuser trim which gives it just a little bit more sporty edge and i really do like that in fact matching with the black bow tie especially here on the nitro yellow exterior color but that is really going to be the difference here on the outside of these two trim levels it's just some minor differences in terms of the equipment and most of the appearance differences uh, with the larger wheels on the one rs the black and trim throughout on the mirror caps front and rear bumpers and stuff like that. But now let's go ahead and take a look on the interior of both of these two because that is where more of the differences lie. So I first wanna start out here on the One RS because this gets the basic interior uh, minus all the RS specific accents throughout, but it gets the basic technology as far as the gauge cluster and the infotainment system. Now here on the door panel, this is gonna be the One RS specific, mostly hard touch plastic uh, with the nice silver accented trim around the window controls all power windows, mirrors, and locks. Nothing is automatic. It does have automatic down on the windows though. There's your six-way manual driver's seat with the RS or one RS specific trim. This is the cloth material. And there is some of the unique RS dashboard bits, but focusing here mostly on the technology and all the differences. Uh, one of them, once again, is the key start. It does have remote start as standard on the RS, but it is going to be a key start ignition. But immediately you'll see this is the analog gauge cluster found on the LS and One RS trim levels. It gives you analog tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right, and a small 3.5 inch monochromatic display in the center, which you can control via this stock over here. Use the select, the arrow scroll wheel, as well as the reset check mark on the end. Uh, but this is the basic gauge cluster, if you will, across the tracks lineup. Now, one thing that's nice about the One RS and all of them in general is it does get a leather wrap, flat bottom, RS specific heated steering wheel as standard equipment. Uh, that is something you don't typically find in this price point of vehicle, but that is standard on this uh, One RS, which is very nice. There's some of the interior trim, automatic LED headlights, wraps across the dashboard. And coming over here to the infotainment system, this is another big difference. And this is the standard eight inch infotainment that you'll find in many other GM vehicles these days. Has the usual UI look to it. Wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, Wi-Fi integrated hotspot, OnStar, and a bunch of other nice settings which you can change here for the vehicle itself. But this is the smaller eight inch display. It does have your physical controls with the volume and home button here on the left side. Single zone manual climate control does have heated front seats as standard equipment on the One RS. USB ports for data and charging. There's your automatic engine stop start off. Lane keeping assist. RS specific leather stitch boot. Electronic parking brake. And this is your black headliner here in this particular trim. No illumination for the vanity. 
manual dimming into rear view mirror, overhead incandescent lighting. And yeah, that is pretty much the front seat of the One RS in a nutshell. I do wanna to touch on the back seat very quickly because there is one small difference out back between these two vehicles. See mostly hard touch door panel here for the back seat. You do get the nice same two-tone cloth seats here in the rear, which is nice. And the biggest difference for the backseat occupants here in this One RS versus the LT, no mat pockets on either front seat and no USB charge ports for rear seat occupants. You just get this small storage bin. Uh, so there's really no rear seat amenities, unfortunately. Uh, but again, this is the less expensive option of the two. There's a better look at the front dashboard. Uh, so once we hop in the LT, you can see the exact differences there. Now moving over to the LT, this one does have a few optional equipment, but like I said, it does have a nicer interior as far as most of the materials go. So here on the door panel, you'll see the yellow accent stitching that this particular one has. Some nice gloss black trim around the window controls, but you do get this leather stitch portion or leatherette stitch portion here just above the armrest, although the armrest itself is still hard touch plastics. Outside of that, same door panel and same window controls. Still have the six-way manual seat, but you can see it does have a two-tone leatherette with the cloth insert. Once again, two-tone where it's lighter on the bottom, darker on the top portion, gray and yellow accent stitching. And there's a look at the dashboard, including a different steering wheel, uh, more specific to the normal uh, non-RS versions of the tracks. Immediately, you do get proximity key with push button start, which is more familiar in newer vehicles these days, in my opinion. One of the first impressions I have jumping in the LT is the newer technology or the more advanced technology, if you will, with the eight inch fully digital gauge cluster. Very similar to that one found in the new Chevy Colorado, as well as the GMC Canyon. And once again, this is paired to the 11 inch infotainment radio screen, which is just a nicer, uh, higher resolution, I believe as well, but just larger in physical size and just looks a little bit better inside of the interior. So those are the biggest things that strikes me immediately upon stepping inside the vehicle. You still get a nice leather wrapped steering wheel with black accent stitching. Once again, this one has optional equipment, which adds the heated steering wheel and the heated front seats. This one also has adaptive cruise control in addition to the standard forward collision avoidance assist that all tracks come with. Uh, audio multimedia controls here on the right side, and it is not a flat bottom design, so it has the silver accent chrome trim um, and just the normal round steering wheel. There's your automatic high beam assist here on the left side, regular wipers, once again, this has the yellow accent interior color. I believe you can get blue depending on the interior color you choose. Automatic headlights and overall the same dashboard design and material usage. Now this one does not have Google integration, unfortunately, in this next generation tracks. It does have wireless engine auto, wireless Apple CarPlay. You can control a lot of the vehicle settings, including the automatic single zone climate control on the screen itself. Uh, Sirius XM, AM, FM, Bluetooth, USB inputs, um, and a six speaker audio system as standard in the LT versus that of the four speaker in the One RS as well as the LS. So that's the main difference there is it's just this infotainment system looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more premium, and you do gain a slightly higher resolution HD backup camera with this larger screen as well uh, versus that of the uh, eight inch system over there, which is just a little bit lower quality, but still good nonetheless. Below that, you do have your single zone automatic climate control with heated front seats in the LT. USB-A and USB-C data ports, there's your 12 volt outlet. Engine stop start, lane keeping assist, and you can see all of the gloss black trim here inside of the LT that surrounds the shifter with the same bright chrome trim work. This is, still has a leather wrap shift boot, which is nice, uh, but doesn't have the red accents because it's not an RS, obviously. Electronic parking brake, and the same here storage here in the center console. So no real difference there. This one does have the lighter gray headliner. Still no vanity illumination, manual dimming into your rear view mirror. And there's your OnStar and overhead incandescent lighting. So outside of that, not a ton of differences, but the main differences uh, lie here in the front dashboard with the upgraded technology and some of the other features, including single zone automatic climate control. Now take a look here in the back seat. Like I said, there is going to be one main difference with this particular LT. The door panel itself is actually gonna be, uh, looks to be the exact same one as that of the One RS. So no soft touch materials here for rear seat occupants. Now the seating surfaces are going to be an upgrade in my opinion with the leatherette accent here on the outside and the two-tone seating effect. But stepping inside, 
The one difference here in the back seat is going to be the addition of USB-A and USB charge only ports in addition to the storage cubby. But there's still no AC vents available, no other power outlets in this one, uh, just the two USB ports up top. No mat pockets on either front seats, but you can see they are lined in the nicer leatherette material all the way down. I believe that might be a little bit more durable depending on uh, the type of usage you do subject your tracks to, um, such as maybe kids kicking the rear seat. Uh, this might be a little bit easier to clean up over time, uh, but nonetheless, that is going to be the biggest difference. And then once again, taking a look at the front dashboard, hopefully you guys get an idea of what it looks like and uh, difference. I will put them side by side so you get an idea. And uh, overall, this one just looks a little bit more premium with the upgraded larger screens and the newer technology. Now coming to the back, the hatch space and physical room is going to be the same. However, there is one small addition to the LT and higher, and that is the cargo privacy cover. It is the hard type, but it is removable uh, via these strings up here, and it does latch in uh, to that one right there. Now the One RS still has the mounting provisions for this cargo cover. It just does not come standard equipment uh, like it does on the LT and higher. Still have a hard touch cargo floor with the compact spare tire beneath it, tons of storage room. One of the aspects I really do like about this tracks, and you still have the light here on the left side with a little bit of additional storage via that pocket. Uh, but the LT and higher will get this uh, cargo privacy cover, which I think is nice so people aren't peering in the back glass, seeing what's in your cargo area. Uh, but I'm sure you can add that after the fact to the One RS if you would like. Now over here on the passenger front seat, there's really no difference in terms of the amenities. Once again, it's just limited to the door materials itself here on this portion right there. The gloss black accents. Still have a four-way manual seat in both. And there's a better look at the yellow accented dashboard with the silver uh, kind of textured plastics throughout. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the differences both on the interior as well as the exterior on the 1RS versus 2RS. Now I do want to touch on the powertrain options available in each of these two, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. Now here in the all-new Chevy Trax, the powertrain and engine options available is going to be standard across every track, so there's no difference no matter if you get the base LS versus that of the top active. Uh, it's going to be the 1.2 liter turbocharged inline three cylinder, which puts out 137 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque paired to a six speed torque converted automatic. So no CVT in any tracks, which is very nice. In my opinion, gives it a more traditional feel as far as the overall driving experience, powertrain feel. You feel the actual transmission shifting instead of CVTs, which keep the engine in its uh, most powerful rev range, uh, which may be good for better fuel economy, but I would personally rather have the six speed auto. So that's gonna do it for this side-by-side -side comparison of the all new 2024 Chevy Trax 1RS versus the LT. And I definitely have a few recommendations and opinions so I guess my thoughts are this, if you want a few nicer materials on the inside as far as the seating surfaces and the door panels go, as well as more optional and standard technology feature creature comforts, then the $1,500 to $2,000 more for the LT might be the way to go um, if you're okay with the standard exterior styling. Now with that said, if you do like the sporty exterior styling found on the One RS, but want everything that is available on the LT and most of the same option packages and stuff like that, then I would highly recommend taking a look at the 2RS trim level of the tracks as you do get the sporty RS appearance both on the inside as well as the outside and you do get available 19 inch wheels which is actually quite crazy um, on a vehicle like this with slightly wider tires but you will get all the same exterior interior technology with the sporty RS appearance in that 2RS trim level however if you're on a budget and looking to stay under $24,000 um, then I really do think the 1RS is a very good value for what you're getting you're getting most of the RS appearance both on the outside and the inside you're getting standard LED projector headlights uh, you're getting a lot of nice technology on the inside with the 8-inch infotainment radio screen, wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, uh, heated front seats, heated steering wheel that's leather wrapped, and the flat bottom design. So as a whole, I really don't think you can go wrong with the 1RS trim level of the tracks. So hopefully, as always, you guys enjoyed this video and found something helpful. If you did, make sure to smash that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel and these videos. Subscribe if you guys are not already subscribed. Make sure to check out my dedicated uh, both current and upcoming videos on the all-new 2024 tracks here on the channel. I have several videos of other GM makes and models as well, including the all-new 2023 Chevy Colorado. And of course, as more models become available for the 2024 model year, I will be covering all those on the channel. So make Make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, and check out some other content I have currently available. And also, if you want more detailed side-by-side -side paper comparisons of the different trim levels of the all-new 2024 Chevy Trax, I do have LS versus LT, as well as 1RS and 2RS trim levels uh, here in this Trax behind me, back in the studio, where I cover all of the detailed paper 
feature specifications and optional packages and stuff like that. And of course, like I said, as these become more available on dealership lots and uh, they're more out there ready to be available, I will have more videos coming on them, uh, hopefully here in the very near future. So once again, I appreciate the support. Hopefully you guys enjoyed as always, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.